Good day everybody. My name is Brian Lewis and I'm an instructor with J10S and today we're going to talk about safe lifting and material handling. As we do at J10S we often and should always ask if there's been any near misses or accidents that have happened in the last month. If there has been some near misses or accidents please pause the video for about five or ten minutes and talk about any near miss or accident uh, that you've had. If you've watched any of these videos before, you've heard me say that it's really important that we do not allow near misses to become accidents, and it's important not to allow accidents to repeat themselves. So we need to find solutions. We need to find solutions for near misses before they become accidents, and we need to find solutions for any accidents that have occurred so we don't allow them to happen again. This is really good safety and health culture and I encourage you to do that right now. So go ahead and pause the video, wait a few minutes, and then start the video back. Okay, hopefully you've taken a few minutes, talked about any near misses or accidents that have occurred, and you're ready to go on with today's video. If we're hopeful, we're hopeful that no near misses or accidents occur, but we want to make sure we take care of what we need to take care of to maintain a good safety and health program. So, as we move along, we're going to talk about safe lifting and material handling practices today. So we're going to talk about some things like keeping your back in a neutral position, we're going to talk about planning the lift, and we're going to talk about team lifting. We're also going to talk about things like good housekeeping. And I will tell you right now that good housekeeping tells a lot about uh, the safety and health program. And good housekeeping will help keep your back in good shape. All of us want to go home with all the fingers and toes that we came to work with. In addition to that, we don't want back pain. I saw recently um, that a study of utility workers under 45 years of age, 80% of them have experienced some kind of back pain. Now, we don't want that. We don't want that. We want people to have back pain free of pain so they can go home, throw a football, play catch, uh, and, and play with their children and grandchildren in the yard. Do things that make them happy. That's really, really important. So keep that in mind. So some potential hazards for unsafe lifting practice. Well, some things we can do is strain muscles and bru get bruises. So straining muscles. Now one thing I'll say about straining muscles, and we'll talk a little bit more about this and as we progress throughout the program, but a lot of times we can use stretching to prevent straining muscles. So what does that mean? That means before you start a lift to do a few shoulder shrugs, to reach for the sky and stretch your back and to bend over. Uh, you don't have to touch your toes, but just the act of bending over and uh, relaxing your back a little bit, stretching it out before you lift something. So that's really important. We do not want to strain our muscles. Some other things we can do to keep from straining muscles uh, are to maintain a good weight. If we maintain a, a, a good weight for our frame and to exercise. Now, for most utility workers, getting a adequate exercise is not really a problem because you all work pretty hard and you move around quite a bit. But when I talk about exercise, it doesn't have to be any kind of extreme exercise. You don't have to lift weights, but uh, you can take nice walks or jogs or any kind of thing that's a hobby that keeps your body moving it is going to be a good thing. Bruises. The other thing listed on this slide, that usually happens with poor housekeeping that I've already mentioned. And there's a few other things on here that we'll talk about that have to do with poor housekeeping as well. But if you don't plan 
and you have poor housekeeping, it's real easy to get bruises and abrasions and things like that. Some other things that you can run into that cause a lot of problems are fractures, cuts, or lacerations. Now the cuts or lacerations go along with the bruises. You trip over something, you slip on something, you cut yourself, you fall down. Uh, you can get some uh, road rash on you if you're working out in the yard or uh, where there's gravel and pavement. So uh, that's where you can get some of that stuff. The fractures. Fractures typically occur from falling while you're moving something and that goes back to housekeeping slips trips or falls when people fall they typically put their hands out to break their fall when they do that they end up uh, breaking a finger breaking a wrist breaking an arm uh, or, or something along those lines and of course a lot of people uh, actually get their feet caught up underneath them and can break ankles and, and legs too so it's not exclusive to one part of the body and, and it can really get you in some trouble quick if you don't know where you're going and you have poor housekeeping. These are some things we're going to talk about later as well. Some other things that we should think about or some questions we should ask ourselves are, can I get my hands or arms around it easily? And can I see where I'm going to go? So can I get my arms or hands around it easily? And can I see where I'm going to go with this box or whatever it is I'm lifting? We need to ask ourselves these questions, and I think a lot of times we do ask them whether we realize it or not. So it's really important that uh, for our back health that we lift things that we're capable of lifting. Now, that doesn't just mean lifting something that's light enough for us to handle easily. It also means lifting things or objects, boxes, whatever it is, that we can easily manipulate, that are not awkward to pick up. There's a lot of things, a lot of boxes, a lot of products, that we lift whether we're moving things around our house or whether we're at work they're not that heavy but but really they're shaped odd or or they're in an oddly shaped box and a lot of times instead of just quote manning up and lifting it and doing something with it where we take a opportunity and a chance to hurt our back we just need to get somebody to help us lift it it's not a hard lift it's not heavy but it's oblong it's goofy and, and we just need help lifting it. So that's important. If, if it's not an easy lift, if it's going to be something you can't get your hands on or your arms around easily, get somebody to help you. So keep that in mind. Can I see where I'm going to go? There again, if it's an oddly shaped box, if it's a larger box or, or whatever it is you're picking up, if you can't see where you're going to go, you're asking for trouble. You're just asking for trouble. You need to be able to see where you're stepping. Uh, this is especially too true when we talk about team lifting. When we talk about team lifting, you're going to have to have you're going to have to have someone coordinate uh, where you're going. Uh, you coordinate the lift, lift on three, and coordinate where you're going with the lift. If somebody's having to go up or down steps, if somebody's going to have to cross a threshold, it's important that someone be watching, paying attention, and letting the person that's helping you lift this box or object or whatever it is know exactly where to go, what to watch out for. Because sometimes, uh, more often than not, if you're doing a team lift, somebody's going to have to be going backwards, right? So look out for each other. Some other things we need to think about before we start lifting stuff are what are those the purple per, excuse me what are the personal protective equipment the PPE requirements for where we're at we need to take into consideration what kind of gloves we need to have eye protection steel toed shoes or boots or metatarsal guards what do we need to have so a lot of times especially in utility work we have access to really good leather gloves 
and, and those are great to protect our hands against cuts, abrasions, scrapes, all that good stuff. Sometimes they really don't help us lift an object unless there's some metal there that's uh, exposed that can that can cut us. Um, so keep that in mind. A lot of times what I have found, especially helping move my friends and family uh, when they move from an apartment to a house or a house to an apartment or whatever they happen to be doing, that if I get some good cheap gloves that are have some grip to them, that goes a long way. Because if you're lifting a lot of stuff, a lot of product, a lot of boxes, uh, the first thing that goes is, is your grip, right? The first thing that goes is your grip. So if you can get you some gloves that have some grip to them, that's going to go a long way to helping you. It's going to go a long way to help you. If you need eye protection, of course, that goes into, can you see where you're going? Still toe shoes or boots. All this stuff is important. If you don't know what metatarsal guards are, they are uh, protection that go over the top of steel toe shoes or boots that protect the small bones uh, that are near the top of your foot. So typically you have metatarsal guards when you're dealing with heavy metal type stuff, angle iron that can come down and, and break or crush those bones on the top of your foot. So those are important and uh, they're not always the funnest thing to have on your foot while you're trying to move. So keep that in mind. The other thing we need to ask ourselves is the lift complicated? So what we really want to talk about here is where are we going to lift up this box, this object, this thing that needs to be moved, and where are we going to take it? Where are we going to take it? What's the path? If it's a team lift, we need to discuss this path with the person or persons that are going to help us pick it up. How long? Now, that can be both time and distance. How long are we going to have to lift this and coordinate where we're going to take it? Are we going to have to take it a, a pretty good distance? Or is it something that we're going to have to hold while somebody else prepares where we're going to set it. Uh, static positions are bad for your body. That's bad ergonomics. Bad ergonomics to hold something that's particularly heavy for an extended period of time in a position where you don't move. So, where are you going? How long a travel distance is it going to take you to get there? What's the path like? And am I going to have to hold, or are people going to have to hold this object while it's being put into place, while it's lifted there and nailed into place? Are you going to have to hold it overhead? All these things are important. So keep that in mind. Is it complicated? Am I going to have to go up and down steps? Am I going to have to cross a threshold? Am I going to have to hold it up over my head for example, a piece of drywall while somebody either nails or screws it into place. These are all things you're going to have to think about. Now, my drywall example is not particularly useful for utility unless you're doing some remodeling yourself. But it is something you might be doing at home. And so we want to keep all of this important. We don't want you to get hurt at work. We don't want to get you hurt at home either. We, it's important that we stay healthy in both places. So keep that in mind. Some reminders on how to properly lift loads so that you can safely handle those loads. So what do we need to do? As you go to lift a box or whatever the load may be, remember to keep your feet roughly shoulder length apart. You don't want them spread too wide. You don't want your feet too narrow, roughly underneath your shoulders. You want to do this because you want to stay balanced and you want to stay stable. So you want to stay balanced and you want to stay stable. That's a little bit of a tongue twister for me. But uh, that's part of keeping your feet apart, roughly shoulder width, and keeping your balance keeping uh, your feet underneath you 
And then you want to bend your knees. You want to use uh, your calf muscles, your thighs, your hamstrings to lift boxes or whatever object you're trying to lift. So you want to bend your knees. You do not want to bend your back at your waist to go lift something up. That's just not a good ergonomic position. And what happens a lot of times is that people bend with their back or they lift with their back instead of bending their knees. And over time, these small micro injuries add up. And then one day, you bend over to tie your shoe. You bend over to pick up a pencil or a pen, something that really has very little weight, if much of anything to it at all. And then all of a sudden you find that your back's hurting you really bad or you've injured it and you can't stand up. Something like that's going on. That happens because you practice bad lifting techniques for a good part of your life. And the micro injuries have caught up with you. So we want to avoid that. So even if it's a small thing, bend at your knees. Go ahead and get in the habit of using your calf muscles, your thighs, your hamstrings to lift any kind of object, no matter how heavy or how light it is. Practice that good lift, lifting technique. Take care of your back. Make sure that you can enjoy life as much as possible with uh, pain-free in your back. So keep that in mind. Keep your back in a neutral position. Now, you've probably heard me say at different times or other people say that when you lift, you want to keep your back straight. What we are really saying there is to keep your back in a neutral position. So if you look up uh, on the Internet or if you look in any kind of uh, anatomy and physiology book and you look at your, someone's spine, you'll notice it's not straight. It has a natural curve to it. So we want to maintain that natural curve or that neutral position. You don't want to do anything goofy with your back when you're trying to lift stuff. Keep that in mind. So one way to do this is to look straight ahead. Don't look down at the object you're lifting when you get ready to lift it. Make sure your hands are in place, then look straight ahead. Don't look down and don't look up. Because when you look down or you look up, you're going to or have the potential to put your back in an unnatural position. We want it to stay neutral, so look straight ahead. Keep your shoulders in the same direction as your hips. So along with lifting or bending at your back, the other common thing that all of us do when we're not paying attention it, when we lift an object is to twist with it especially if we have to pick something up off a pallet turn 45 90 180 degrees whatever it is and place it somewhere on a truck or or on a skid or whatever it may be so we don't want to make that twisting motion that twisting motion is bad for your back, just as bad as lifting with your back. So you want to keep your shoulders in the same directions over your hips, and you want to keep your hips over your feet. If you need to move an object, pick an object up, and go 90 degrees with it, do not twist your back, but move your feet. Keep your shoulders and your hips going in the same direction. Twisting over time just is really, really hard on your back. It's poor ergonomics, and if you keep doing it, eventually it's going to cause you some serious back pain. So keep that in mind. Your hips over your feet and your shoulders, same direction over your hips. Keep the object that you're lifting as close as you can to your chest. Look straight ahead and keep your back in a neutral position. This is what we mean when we talk about how to safely lift or properly lift loads. Keep your arms inside your frame. So what am I saying? Well, if you stand up and you put your arms down at your side, 
and you notice where your fingertips touch your thighs and then as you gradually lift your hands and arms in front of you till they're straight out from your shoulders what you'll notice is you form a box your arms form a box inside your frame from where your fingertips touch your thighs up to where your arms are parallel with your shoulders or you're straight ahead parallel with the ground this box is where all your power is any time your arms move outside of that box whether it's a little bit further forward or whether it's a little bit to the side you are putting yourself in a position where your major muscle groups can't do the lifting and you're going to put yourself in a spot where you're going to get hurt so you want to be careful you want to keep your arms inside your frame you don't want to put your shoulders at risk by lifting objects uh, above your head you want to if you need a step ladder then you can properly use a, a step stool or something like that you really don't want to lift it over your head if you can help it if you can help it keep that in mind you want to keep your arms inside that frame of your body where you're at your most powerful and you don't put your shoulders your back your neck uh, or your arms at risk you also want to lift smoothly you don't want to use quick burst of power now that's probably not what you think of when you watch football on Saturdays uh, or Sundays but for the rest of us that are not world-class athletes and don't work out and train our body like these uh, world-class athletes do we want to be smooth we do not want to use quick burst of power they put our bodies at risk and they lend when we do that sort of thing it lends to us over exerting ourselves and pulling muscles tearing muscles uh, pulling or straining tendons t uh, tearing tendons whether there be in our arms our elbows our wrist or, or even uh, rotator cuffs knees included knees and hips included so uh, all all of our joints are, are meant to, to be used in a smooth way so make sure you use those in a smooth way and, and keep yourself safe by lifting smoothly and not using quick burst of power some other things you can do is if you're lifting a, a, a load a box an object whatever it happens to be adjust your hands if you need to okay you're eventually going to set that box or that load down somewhere you don't want to pinch your fingers you don't want to uh, hurt them against the door frame if you have to walk through a door frame with them uh, you don't want to put your hands in a position or your arms for that matter uh, where, where you you going to put them in a pinching uh, point or a pinch position so keep that in mind if you need to adjust your hands adjust your hands as you need to if it's a weird object that you're lifting a weird load or if it's a heavy load and you're going to have to have another person or maybe two help you with the lift you need to synchronize now you need to communicate well you need to say okay we're going to lift on three and then when you say three then you're going to lift and you need to discuss where you're going to go and uh, if there's two or three of you or four of you lifting something talk about it pre-plan the route you're going to take if someone's going to have to move backwards make sure that they understand if there's any kind of steps any kind of thresholds any kind of uneven surfaces that they're going to have to deal with and uh, when you come upon those spots communicate let them know hey your next step you're going to have to go up a step or down a step or hey we're on gravel now that sort of thing tell them where to turn when to turn all that stuff's important so whether it's the person that needs help or another person uh, that's involved with the lift make sure everybody knows and you have a plan and everybody knows the plan that's important 
do not lift more than your frame can handle. So what I'm going to tell you here is most of average men can lift about 50 pounds or so fairly easily. Well, maybe not easy, but if you use proper lifting techniques, you don't get hurt. Now, there are some people around that have larger frames, and they're capable of lifting a lot more than that. And that's fine. That's fine. That's just the way they're made. Now, there are people that are smaller, and they have trouble lifting 50 or 60 pounds. What I'm trying to tell you is, be reasonable. Be reasonable. Do not, let me repeat, do not overestimate or get into a macho frame of mind about what you can lift and what you cannot lift. This is not the time to be macho. Okay? So all of us men have a propensity to overestimate what we can do. And uh, I don't know exactly why that is, but we get a little macho in us, and we'll, we want to say, hey, watch this, right? Hey, watch this. I can do it. So I'm going to encourage you not to do that. I'm going to encourage you to use a little common sense and uh, know what you can lift and what you can't. Once again, with the team lift, I mentioned this, but make sure that the path you intend to travel is clear. Always practice good housekeeping. Good housekeeping just speaks to how good your safety and health program is. And you can avoid roughly 25% of all recordable injuries by just having good housekeeping, eliminating slips, trips, and falls. And that's never more important than when you're carrying a box or a load or several of you are carrying a box or a load and taking it to where it needs to go. If you don't have good housekeeping, if you've got stuff in the way that you can trip over, if no one cleans up water or hydraulic fluid or oil, if you're moving across a Bay Area where you do work, this is going to cause you nothing but problems. It's going to cause you nothing but problems. So keep that in mind. Make sure that your path that you tend to take is clear and, and you're, going to do, you're going to go a long way to helping yourself. Remember to move your feet, just like I talked about keeping your shoulders over your hips and your hips over your feet, not bending at your back or your waist, not bending your back at your waist, and not twisting, not twisting. Move your feet, keep your feet uh, at least shoulder length uh, or shoulder width apart, keep your hips over your feet, and your shoulders over your hips, lift straight up, using your calves, using your thighs, using your hamstrings, look straight ahead, keep your back in a neutral position, and once you make it up with the box or the object, the load as close to your chest as you can inside your power zone that we talked about, if you need to turn, turn using your feet. Do not turn by twisting your back. If you twist with your back, you're going to cause yourself some problems. So keep that in mind. Some other things that we can talk about here is stretching. Okay, so when it comes time to lift something, whether it's particularly heavy or maybe it's not so heavy, there are some stretches you can do that as long as you don't overextend, overexert, and you do them smoothly, it will help your body. One such thing you can do is reaching towards the sky just by lifting both hands up and reaching them up towards the sky and stretching your back out that way, that can help you out quite a bit. Another thing you can do are shoulder shrugs. You can shrug your shoulders. Just do that several times to get your shoulders, your back, and your neck ready to make a lift. Another exercise you can do is to place your hands on your hip, lean forward a little bit, lean backwards a little bit, lean to your right or left, and lean back to the opposite direction. There again, it's really important that you're smooth when you do these exercises. It's also important that you don't overexert yourself 
All you're really doing is preparing your body to lift. You're getting your mind right and you're getting your body right and preparing to lift. This is really important that we do this and it really goes a long way to helping you uh, keep your muscles from getting strained, from get, keeping your ligaments from being strained and all that good stuff. So. I appreciate you all paying attention. I absolutely do appreciate you all paying attention. If you have any questions, since this is a video, I'm going to ask you to talk amongst yourselves. All of us adults really learn a lot from telling stories and interacting. That's how we learn the best. So I encourage you to talk amongst yourselves. Talk with your safety director, your safety manager, or the person that's in charge of safety for your facility, your utility, and uh, talk things out. Make sure you get things right. Make sure you do things right. As always, all of us JTNS instructors are available uh, to answer any question you might have. If there's a question you've got that we don't know the answer, we will do some research and get you an answer as quickly as we can. Uh, once again, Thanks for listening. Thanks for paying attention. Uh, go out there. Do what you need to do. Provide the vital work that you provide and do it as safe as you can. Thank you all.